Right, this is a lecture on formal languages and automata, and it's on the pumping lemma, uh, which is a method to find if a language is recognisable. And we say a language is recognisable if you can write a NDA or DFA for it. So otherwise, you can't make a mapping. So, as I've just said, recognisable is if there exists a DFA for the language. Uh, it's usually written L equals L A, where A is a DFA. And one thing we can say about recognisable languages is that if we have two of them, A and B, then the union is recognisable, the intersection is recognisable, the complement will be recognisable, the sum is recognisable, and this one as well, which I haven't really seen in practice, uh, one not including the other is recognisable. Uh, another thing to do with recognisable is if it's rational. A rational language is one that has finitely many states, or can be obtained by finitely many uh, applications of sums and unions that kind of thing and if it's re if it's rational then it's also recognizable so it just has a finite number of states right now now for the actual pumping lemma uh, what well, this is a method for finding if something's recognizable so if if l is our language if that is recognizable and it's a positive integer big n this is our pumping length uh, then for any word in the language with the size of the word greater than or equal to n, these are the conditions you need to satisfy, uh, then there's a, a factorization, this isn't unique, you can do it all sorts of ways, where the word can be divided by into u times v times x with these conditions, that v is not the empty set, and the size of u times v is less than or equal to n. And then if it's recognisable, then it will satisfy u uh, times v to some power, any power, times x will have to be an element of the language. So we've got an example. I think I've only got one example, I'm afraid. Uh, we want to prove that the language, ww, actually I think I might have two examples, uh, ww, uh, where w is a word in a, b, star. So we can have A's and B's as many times as we want. We want to say, see, uh, we need to prove that it's not recognisable. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to think of some sort of example that we can use. So a possible word, this is how you, you go about doing it. It's all about trying to find a contradiction. So we could, uh, I'll tell you how it could go wrong at the end. But if we choose the word A, N, B, then... Uh, this is going to be a word because it's got a b star so we want w w two uh, words repeated so it's a n b a n b and the size of this as you can see is n plus n plus one plus one so it's two n plus one that's the size of that so the first condition satisfied which was the size has to be greater than or equal to n um, now we need to find the factorization uvx with uv the size of that being less than n now because our first letter a is n it means we're going to have to divide a up so it can be less than or equal to but it's nice to divide it as much as you can uh, just to make it work a bit better so if we divide it up so that uh, we let u equal ar v equal as and x equal a t b a n b because the size of if, if we have r plus s plus t is equal to n then we're pretty sure the size of u v will be less than n given that t is not, not even if t is zero then the size will be n which is still accepted now what we want to do is we want to do v to some power usually two do whatever you like but it's just easier to do it with 2, so if we square that, we get a r a s a 2 s t la la, which is equal to a s times a to the n, b a n b, 
which is equal to a n plus s b a n d. Now, this is not recognized in the language because we're having a word and it's going to re be repeated. Here we've got a n plus s b and we know for a fact that this is not equal to the empty set because that's one of the conditions we're having so s can't be zero or anything like that uh, so that has to have a value which means this is not the same as this so it's not repeat it's not a repeated word which means it is not recognizable we found a contradiction now i think i've got another example i made this two days ago so uh, we want to, this is our last example to prove that a n b n where n is greater than or equal to zero is not recognizable so again we want to find to find an, an example oh i was just going to illustrate first how this could might have not worked if you were to just choose uh, the value say a n uh, as our word then we'd repeat it and have a n a n a 2 n so the size is 2 n we split that up we could do a similar thing like this but as we, when we get to the end, what all we'll have is we'll have a load of A's. So we'll have A to the, let's say we did it a similar way to this, we'd have like A to the N plus S times A to the N, uh, which would give us A to the 2N plus S, which would be recognised in here, uh, given that it's an even power. So if A to the 2N plus S would be, uh, say, 14, then that could be fine, because we could have A to the 7 twice. So it's all about choosing a good example to start off with. Just put as many A's and B's as you can. Right, so now I want to prove that this is not recognisable. First one's an example. Big N's good, so we'll have A to the big N, B to the big N. The size of this, as you can see, is 2N. It's got N of these and N of these. Uh, now what we want to do is divided up. So again, I've done exactly the same again. It's always a nice way to do this. You can do it any other way, but here we've got u as ar, v as as, x as at, bn. You can already see this. How, you can hopefully already see how this is not going to, how it's going to work. If we now square this v, so we have a to the two s, it'll divide it like last time, like this, which gives as, an, bn, a to the n plus s, bn. And as you can see, the powers n plus s is not equal to n, and so it is not recognisable. I hope that's all made sense.